Hey, Peter. Hey, Adam. Buongiorno. <laughs> Arrivederci. Buonasera. Buonasera. Uh, I'm Adam Annis. It's a, my pizza pie. Okay. <laughs> that was over the line. I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you today. You are in Italy. I'm in the United States. We got a bit of a delay, I think, on this audio, but we're going to try to make this work. I'm just going to be extra sensitive to the time I start talking after you stop talking. As will I be extra sensitive to the time when I commence to talk and you commence to talk. We are going to make this. I said yesterday, by the way. <laughs> we're yeah, exactly. We're going to make this work, man. It's going to work. <laughs> yeah. All well, right. the funny thing about it is, like, you know, our comic, our comedic timing is so off. Anyway, this might actually force us into to be synced up. <laughs> it's true. Wouldn't it be crazy if it like we had better comedic timing when we were off by about a second and a half? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Today we have a speak pipe. So let's check it out. Let's do it. Hey, Peter and Adam. This is John from California. Um, I have a question about having foundations in classical music. Um, I've noticed that a lot of the best jazz musicians um, have had classical training when they were younger before they started in jazz. And I'm wondering if uh, for someone like myself who's beginning to learn piano when I'm older, would it be worth it for me to focus more on the classical side of piano and learning some classical repertoire uh, before really getting into learning jazz piano? Um, or just can I go straight into learning jazz? What would be the pros and cons maybe of focusing more on the classical side first versus just going straight into jazz? Um, you guys can answer that. That'd be, that'd be great. Love the podcast. Thanks, guys. It's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. And, and um, I think it's uh, I, th- I think we actually might have a little something to bring the table on this, even from two continents. Yeah, I agree. Um and so thanks, John, for sending that in. By the way, if you want to send us your voice message, your speak pipe, we got a lot of great ones on deck here. And uh, you can always yeah. go to you'llhearit.com. You can leave us a speak pipe. We love answering these, and uh, we love getting great questions like this, John. So, Pete, why don't you start off, man? I know you've had uh, plenty of classical training, especially when you were younger. Uh, how do you feel like this fits into your jazz playing even now? Um, yeah, I mean, I think for, for me, it, 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 it's been really beneficial and I'm, I, I, you know, it's kind of only pay that I knew, but it's definitely not the only pathway. And I would say to John in California, um, you know, you said, should you focus on class or if I heard correctly, should you focus on classical? I think you can actually do both. I don't, I don't think you need to, fo- it's not like you need to focus on classical first, like it's some kind of preparation mm-hmm. and then you graduate into jazz. Uh, I think that you can jump right in. Uh, and I think you kind of describe yourself at the beginner level um, right into jazz. But I think some classical foundational work as you go can really be helpful as well and fun. You know, uh, the piano is such a great instrument. It's interesting now being in Italy. Every time I'm here, you know, this is where the piano was born right. in Italy. And, and there's such a great piano tradition here. Um, and, and if we think about it kind of, I guess, holistically, maybe a little bit of just of ourselves as pianists first and not classical players or jazz players or pop players or whatever. Let's just think about us as pianists. Of course, we're jazz musicians and that's a whole other thing. But just as pianists and learning the instrument, um, classical repertoire, as is the jazz repertoire and the blues repertoire, the different things, ragtime, those are all like big worlds, you know, because this is a big instrument with with a diverse and wonderful repertoire. This is not like... um, well, I mean, I, and I'm not trying to throw shade on the saxophone or anything, but it just pops in my head. Saxophone, it's it's a different thing because there's maybe not a huge – there's great repertoire in a classical world for saxophone, but it's not as, as it is for, for piano. Um, so it's more dominated by jazz. But for, for, for piano, there is a great repertoire. It's a great um, – things we can do for our technique. But you can definitely do it, in my opinion, at the same time as you do it in jazz. 
I agree. I think you can do the two congruently. I do think, uh, to your point, that you know, as you would learn about maybe how a blues musician approaches playing the piano, or like a rock and roll, mm-hmm. or or folk, or whatever ragtime, however, however the genre is that is somehow relative to jazz, which most are, uh, classical and classical music, and especially in the piano tradition and jazz, have have kind of overlapped several times during the history of jazz. So, I do think that that. Uh, there are some certain uh, pieces you can hit on repertoire-wise that might help you. I'm thinking, of course, like some some French stuff, some Debussy and things like that. But even going back to, I know you always recommend for beginners to start off with this two- and three-part Bach inventions. And it's because of classical music's yeah, yeah. tradition at the keyboard before even the piano. You know, there was 200 years of maybe more of keyboards uh, instruments. And so there's just this long history of yeah. of these of technique that we can pull from. And certainly to your point about the saxophone being, you know, really uh, jazz is the king on the saxophone as far as repertoire and for his techniques even. Uh, I think for piano, it's always really helpful to go back yeah. to some of these classical techniques. You know, we we always preach about the Bach two-part inventions for technique, about the McFerrin scale and arpeggio manual has some great fingerings to get you some really good foundational technique. Those things can be, I think, a big game changer yeah. at a beginner level, especially because your technique is still being molded. So why not uh, visit some of these like uh, really tried and true tested traditions? Exactly. And I think, you know, you're making a good uh, kind of delineation there, I would say, between classical technique and classical repertoire. So, you know, the classical technique can be very useful as a foundation for the jazz technique because there's a lot of overlap, I would say. Um, A lot more than, you know, we talk about saxophone or trumpet or something where, like, say on the trumpet or the saxophone, the classical uh, technique and the jazz technique for producing a sound and stuff is fairly different. I mean, I'm no expert in those worlds. Whereas in jazz piano, uh, there's a lot more overlap. If you look, look at a like jazz piano, that's sort of the foundation of, of, of how the music has evolved as, you know, particular to this instrument, there's not a lot we have to actually change, I don't think, in terms of how we play the instrument. So that stuff can be beneficial. But I mean, that's like from a technical level, if you want to get into classical music, you know, repertoire, and I mean, that's an endless world that you can do that as well. That's not necessarily necessary. Although like what you say, like with Debussy and Ravel, different things, there could be some wonderful things that you might want to apply to jazz playing. But I think just getting that basic technique and then if your kind of end goal is to be a jazz pianist, just taking that the scales, the arpeggios, maybe some some Bach invention, sonatinas. I think sonnets of these, um, sonnet, I think they call them sonatina albums or sonatina collections. It's like Clementi. Yeah. Are, you know, oh, yeah. Italian I did the Clementi book. sonatinas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, me too. But that stuff is great just for kind of working out. Because basically what you're working on is your sound, your yep. fingering, your independence of the hands, your independence of the fingers, all the same things that you're going to use in jazz. But you're kind of able to learn it in a little bit more of a controlled environment of written classical music where you know what notes you're going to have to play. So you're, you're kind of not having to worry about the improvisation and that whole world at the same time as you're building up your basic piano technique. You know, also I'm thinking, Peter, on this, uh, as you're working on your jazz stuff and maybe you're throwing in some classical stuff, which includes reading music, you can even incorporate, I would, and and have, especially when I was younger, you know, folks like Scott Joplin and maybe some easier sort of Fats Waller transcriptions of, of swing yeah. piano stuff like that kind yeah. of stuff can be not only great yeah. for your technique and you can apply some of the classical stuff, but you also are seeing on the page how jazz developed and some, some of those, those voicings and, and chord progressions and things that we still use today and, and everything melodic content, everything that we still uh, could use today uh, can be revealed very easily. Absolutely. I think Scott Joplin is such a, uh, found, it, I mean, it's both a foundation of uh, really what became jazz. I mean, you talk about ragtime, but it's it, it's a foundation, but it's also the bridge between, um, you know, classical and march music and, and stride piano, basically. So right. you can see that, as you say, revealed in the paper, you can feel it in your fingers. And that that's a great way. I mean, a lot of the Scott Joplin stuff is pretty, 
advanced in terms of like you have to build up to that. That's a little bit harder, but sometimes they have like some simplified versions. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking uh, of. Of some of that stuff, which you can try out too. Yeah. Yeah. But even like, I mean, if you're like, if, if John in, in John in California, if you are like truly, truly beginner, even some of this stuff, like, you know, I mean, the Bach inventions are tricky, like in terms of, um, they're relatively simple, but in terms of independence of the hands, you have to be pretty advanced with that. So that, that's not going to be something that you can tell you jump into right at the beginning. But if you talk about some of these graded uh, piano method books and stuff mm -hmm. that are, I mean, not really, they're classical. They're just foundational for playing piano. You can work your way through that kind of as, as, as quickly as you have the time to practice, basically. Yeah, and if you're truly a, a beginner, John, too, look out for, there are some, there are loads and loads of like easy classical piano uh, books that you can find anywhere. Yeah. Some of them are super cheesy and some of them are actually okay. As far as like, you know, you get the real for Elise yeah. or, you know, the, the, the first, uh, the first Bach prelude and C, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff, like, uh, getting into right. that can be kind of an easy thing. So, so go take a look at that. Go take a look on Amazon, but you can check it out on scribed as well, which is a great website to check out some, some old yep. out of print yeah. music. Um, yeah, thanks for the, yeah, and I don't part. know if this is still, if, if this is still available, uh, but what I learned on, I think I've seen, I mean, I know I saw these books as the Oxford, as in like Oxford, England, I guess, some kind of graded the Oxford classical piano method. Mm. But it was very like, I mean, it's like for kids. And, uh, but it's for any, it's not just for kids, it's like for beginners. I think it did have some cute little drawings, a little coloring Aww. might have been involved. Oh, yeah. You know, cool. young PD needed some 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 visual aids to go along. With <laughs> Don't we all? Aids. Don't we all? All right. Well, thanks, John, for the speak pipe. And uh, like I said, go to youllhearit dot com to check it out. Uh, hey, go to openstudiojazz dot com to check out our brand new what? platform. I know, man, popping off over there. Is that legal? It is now. Is that is that? It's legal. It's it's happening. No, we've been getting some wonderful feedback. Yeah, definitely go to openstudiojazz.com. Check out the new platform, the new courses. Well, it's some of the old courses, but they're refreshed. They're being represented. Um, they're being rolled out uh, quickly, yep. quickly, yep, very quickly. And and a lot of great work is going to be is being done on that. And so uh, check it out. Yeah, we've already got a ton of great feedback from the new site. So so really, if you haven't checked it out yet, go go over there and check it out. Some awesome piano courses, some awesome drum courses, trumpet. We got it all. Basically, we got it all. So uh, yeah, anything else, Pete, from yeah. Italy? Where are you at, by the way? I think that's it. that's it. I'm in uh, Naples. Actually, I'm kind of oh. actually I'm in Caserta, which is like right outside of Naples. You're having uh, the you best know. pizza in the world right now, aren't you? I have not had any pizza yet. We just got in, and uh, but I was interested. The last couple of days we were in Madeira, yeah. which I hadn't been in years, which is an island kind of floating off of uh, Morocco there. It's a Portuguese island. Ooh. We had a really good time at the jazz festival there. And now we're doing three gigs in a row here, up in Umbria. So it's like Southern Italy. Yeah. Is Umbria, it the, the summer, the, the the summer jazz fest up there? Yeah, Umbria Jazz Fest, and then we're playing up in Venice. It's a rough tour. tour. It's a rough tour. It's rough, you know. You know, they're they're forcing food and wine every night into us, but we, we do what we can here. Awesome, know. man. Well, uh, we'll come back tomorrow from your hotel room and the pod cave. Sounds good. All right. Until then. Well, you'll hear it. Grazie mille. <laughs>